focused and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of May 7, Tuesday. I'm Riza Diaz. We've got today's rush starting off with a man claiming to be the anonymous person tagging the Duterte's and some allies to the illegal drug trade. Now, if a few days ago you asked, will the real Bicoy please stand up? Well, now he seems to have been. JC Cosico has the report. The man claiming to be the hooded anonymous personality nicknamed Bicoy has surfaced at the integrated bar of the Philippines. The online persona became controversial after tagging friends and family of the president to the illegal drug trade. Advin Kula says he went to the IBP to request legal assistance. Now, this is Nakikita ko ang pagwasak ng pamilya na dulot ng droga na kung saan naging bahagi ako sa pagpapakalat nito noong membro pa ako ng sindikato. Panahon na upang buksain ang pumapayagpag ng sindikato nito. Advin Kula claims he was previously a marketing consultant for a firm owned by Tess Ranyola, one of those he accused involved in the drug syndicate called Bicol Ring. Ranyola has denied links to illegal drugs. But in a statement, Advin Kula says Ranyola put him in the syndicate's operations center in February 2010. Advin Kula says he also became part of a group preparing the monthly tara or documents about the money going to the group's bosses. He also maintained his allegations about the president's son, Paulo Duterte, and former presidential aide, Bongo. He says his previous job included scanning the codes embedded in the tattoos of senior members, which included Polong and Go. Advin Kula, however, says he has no links to Ocho Diretso or the Aos Duterte Matrix. He also does not know Rodel Jaime, the person arrested for allegedly uploading the Bicoy videos. The IBP for its part says Advin Kula is not a client. Nagpatulong lang siya kung pwede siyang um, uh, tawag dito, naghanap ng notary public. Kahimik lang siya. Tapos uh, para wala naman akong siguro napansin ko lang na medyo kinakabahan din siya. IBP says they will have to study the case first to decide if they will take in Advincula's case. For News 5, JC Cosico, We Are One News. Presidential son Paolo Duterte soon after slammed the IBP for allegedly falling for the Bicoy's story very easily. In a Facebook post, Pulong says he has lost all respect for the IBP after they allowed Jomel Advincula, the man claiming to be Bicoy, tell his side in their venue. Here are some of the day's biggest stories. President Duterte himself has yet to react to developments on the Bicoy case. Malacanang says the chief executive is still drowning in paperwork. That's despite Duterte himself revealing through a photo that he was simply been catching up on some Netflix series. Still, Panelo defended the chief executive against Senator Trillanes' claims that the president is just being lazy. But after being out of the public eye for almost six days, President Duterte has seen or was seen attending the wake of former House Speaker Prospero Nograles. The top palace official flew all the way from Davao to arrive at Nograles' wake in Taguig around midnight to recall Duterte and the Nograles locked horns for three decades as the two most prominent politicians in Davao City. Now, the chief executive stayed for a few hours to pay respects to former rival. Duterte also also cleared his schedule to attend his regular cabinet meeting. On the other hand, Malacanang has or also reacted to claims that some Chinese establishments refused entry to Filipinos. Panelo said that if found true, the corresponding local government unit must act to shut down these businesses. He added that the Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello will be looking into the matter. Yeah, like there, it, yeah. there is a complaint and they validate that it has violated the law, then it should. LGU should do their job. What well, we have to investigate that, if that is true. We cannot allow that to happen. They cannot be discriminating against Filipinos. Because it's a public uh, business and therefore it should cater to all. 
Meanwhile, high meat demand from China is also forcing global meat prices to go up. But the good news is a more expensive imported supply means more opportunities for our local hog producers to sell and make income. Shaila Francisco has this report. Chairo buys pork products twice a week for her restaurant in Quezon City. She prefers cheaper imported pork. While local and imported pork chop are both priced at 220 pesos per kilo, local pork belly is 15 pesos more expensive than imported ones. Because I think it's a reasonable price naman siya and malinis. Tapos, ano, um, tsaka maganda yung ano niya. Yung okay yung taste ng ano niya, meat. Mas gusto ko siyempre yung cheaper price. The cheaper, the better. Para, kumbaga, hindi rin affected yung mga customer ko sa presyo namin. Kasi di ba ganun, pag tumaas ang price ang kinukuhanan mo, magtataas ka rin ng konti doon sa mga kliyente mo. But local pork prices are bound to go up, with suppliers now charging retailers 2 pesos higher compared to last week. Retailers say they will be forced to pass this on to consumers if prices continue to increase by up to 5 pesos. Malaki na po ang ibig ko sa amin yun. Talagang ramdam na rin namin yung ano nun. Magkano yung tataas? Mga sampo. Mga halimbawa, 220 ngayon, mag-230 po yun. Even prices of imported pork products are seen to rise three months from now. The Meat Importers and Traders Association, or MITA, says global prices are now increasing due to higher demand from China. The country's supply was significantly affected by the African swine fever. Because of this, other meat products will also be hit. Prices keep going up. Uh, the Chinese government is buying a lot of pork to stockpile. Global implications are, are quite huge. Uh, because, because as we said, as I said earlier, uh, the total available global pork supply cannot satisfy the demand of China. So already we see the price of beef and lamb have gone up. The price of chicken have gone up because the consumption has moved, shifted to other meat. Because of the increase in prices of imported meat products, their volume is expected to decrease, an opportunity the Department of Agriculture says for local hog producers to sell their goods. That's good for us because then our local producers, uh, producers will be able to uh, compete. Ang uh, limiting factor lang naman sa productivity ng ating mga local farmers would be the price in the market. If the price is good, they will produce more. The DE is now considering exporting pork to China to help stabilize prices and supply. Shaila Francisco, we are One News. Meanwhile, here are the biggest stories from the dailies. It looks like meat prices aren't the only thing rising. The Freeman reports that the minimum fare for jeeps across central Visayas has increased from 6 pesos and 50 centavos to 8 pesos. The LTFRB approved the increase on April 24 after learning that PUJs in central Visayas have not been granted the fare increase since 2016, now despite the drastic increase in diesel prices. However, the provisional increase is 50 cents short of the requested amount by the Transport Coalition 1 Utak. And after a week uh, or a week after Labor Day, Business World reports that increasing minimum wage in several Asian countries is taking a toll on their competitiveness. Global credit rating agency Fitch says governments in some Asian countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, and the Philippines have been compromising with workers and union groups to avoid a social unrest. But Fitch flags this as a risk, saying the risks are the rise in minimum wage across the region would affect businesses' production costs forcing them to look for alternate labor force options outside Asia. And amid cloud seeding operations, the Angat Dam continues to dip further, breaching its 180 critical mark or 180 meter critical mark. Angat Dam's water level was recorded at 176 meters on Monday, even after the cloud seeding operation that resulted in two hours of rainfall in the watershed. The Bureau of Soils and Water Management is set to conduct another round of cloud seeding operations in Angat Adam next week. But here's one thing that can help raise water levels not just in Angat but in all dams in northern Luzon. A low-pressure area has been spotted north of Lawag City, Ilocos Norte. The trough of the LPA in Luzon will bring cloudy skies and scattered rain showers in most parts of the region. Pagasa says this is unlikely to turn into a storm. 
Localized thunderstorms are also expected to bring rain over the rest of the country today. And it looks like commuters in the southern end of the metro are getting a reprieve. That's after PNR hybrid electric train started operations on Monday. Gerard de la Peña tells us more. The Philippine National Railway's new hybrid electric trains have started running from Alabang to Kalamba. The new trains are Filipino-made, which cost the DOST just around 120 million pesos. The construction of the project started way back in 2013. But the train only started operating this year because of the long process of designing, bidding, construction, and testing to make sure that it's safe for public use. The passengers sing nothing but praises for the train's sleek look and fully air-conditioned interior. The train is also environment friendly since it can be run by diesel or electricity. Hindi na natin kailangan pa mag-import ng mga export from other countries para ma-maintain siya. So kapag nagkaroon ng problema, kaya na po natin gawin. And locally sourced na yung mga components, kaya mas mabilis natin mapapalitan. The train can accommodate up to 6,000 passengers a day. A great relief for the PNR which receives a demand of more than 200,000 passengers a day. But because of the lack of trains, the PNR can only service around 50,000 daily. As of now, medyo limited yung aming number of train sets dahil yung aming ina-expect na mga brand new trains ay dadating pa lang. The hybrid train's first 200 passengers can avail themselves of free rides until May 23. This is in connection to its validation run before the train is designated a longer route and a longer service time. For News 5, Gerard de la Peña, we are One News. Let's catch up now on some of the top trends around the nation and around the world. We've got Pinoy Pride all over the biggest night in Broadway. Three Pinoys are nominated in this year's 73rd Tony Awards, starting off with Eva Noblezada, who is nominated for the second time for the Best Actress category, this time for her role in Yuri Dice in the Broadway musical Hades Town. Film and designer Robert Brill is also nominated for his work in For Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of or the Life and Times of the Temptations. We're also on the lookout if it will be the second Tony Award for Clint Ramos for his costume design in the Torch Song. Now the Tony Awards will be held on June 9 in New York. From one Tony to another, Iron Man's final appearance in the MCU now ranks as the second highest grossing film in the world. The latest offering of the Marvel franchise was or has surpassed James Cameron's Titanic by earning nearly $2.2 billion at the global box office. But that's not yet the end of the end game because it can still claim first spot if it can top another film by James Cameron. That's Avatar, which grossed $2.78 billion in sales. Britain's latest royal couple are officially parents. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry welcomed their first child, a baby boy, on Monday. The proud father's reaction? Well, let's listen in. I'm very excited to announce that uh, Meghan and myself had a baby boy um, early this morning. A very healthy boy. Um, mother and baby are doing incredibly well. Um, it's been the most amazing experience <laughs> I could ever um, possibly imagine. Um, how any woman does what they do is beyond comprehension, but... And that's how the day, the day is shaping up to be. Tuesday, May 7, 2019. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.